Welcome to Ian's Fish Room. I'm Tim, and today we're going to be talking about the Fluval Large Breeder Box. Uh, we're going to take a look at this, um, look at all the parts, and show you how it goes together. And then we'll I'll show you a little bit about what I do with it and how I think you could use it for yourself and, and where it'll be useful for you. Let's start by taking a little look here at the box. Uh, one of the things you'll notice right here is it's a half gallon. So it's a pretty good size um, breeding box here. Uh, a couple of things else that we're going to take a notice of is it's a hang on back design or hang on the front design, really. Uh, either one. Um, this is a little bit different than a lot of your breeder boxes. It's not actually going to be in the tank, but it is going to be on the outside of your tank. The next thing is this air driven water circulation. So one of the problems with having a breeder box on your outside of your tank is you may not be getting the water from your tank. Um, and this air driven water circulation is going to take care of that for us. It's going to bring the water in and uh, from right from the fish tank that we have it connected to. And yeah, let's open this up and take a look inside. So here we've got our, our lid. We've got some instructions that we'll put off to the side and probably not bother to look at. We've got a bunch of parts here and I'll show you how those work. And then we've got our main box. And so you can see the tank's gonna hang right there off the side. So what we have here is you're gonna set your airline right there. So in our bag of parts, first thing we have here is these are going to be dividers that we could use within the breeder box. Um, if you wanted to try to do live bearers in this breeder box, you could stick this in there. And let me pull the box over here to show you. And you've got two of them here. And you could separate them and put the fish in different sides so that you're small fry could get away from the, the adult. Uh, you can also split it in half. So you have a couple different options here with these dividers. I do not use this breeder box for live bearers. Um, personally, I like to have my live bearers colony breed. Uh, so that for me is not one of the things I'm going to be dealing with that. But for you, that, that might work out well. The next thing we have Right here, this is goes on the side. This is for our intake for our water. Uh, and you can see this plastic hose, it just snaps into place there. And there's another clear plastic hose. That's gonna go right there on the end of that and that's going to slide up and down so that you can adjust the height of how far into your box you want. So I'm gonna set that aside for just a minute. The next piece we're going to need is this piece right here, this is going to go on the end of your intake tube, and you should be able to see here on the end, there's some slots in there for water to move through, and you're going to connect your air hose right here. It's going to slide right over the end. I'm not going to try to do this on camera because it's a tight fit, but we'll get that slid right over, and your air is going to pump down into that, and that's going to provide you with the uplift needed for the water to come through. Another thing that's going to come in your box is this little piece right here. That's going to go on this end, and that's going to slide right over there, and that allows you to direct the flow of your water. So you can turn so that it turns directly down or turn to the side to get the water moving sideways a little more. Uh, I typically run mine sideways because I feel like it's a little bit quieter that way. So I've slid the air hose over the end here. And what you're going to do is you're going to take that with your breeder box and, and try to do this on camera. But right here, it's not going to come probably real well, but there is um, a little channel here that you're going to slide your air hose through. So sometimes this can be a very tight fit and sometimes it goes smoothly. So this one, luckily for me, went very smooth right on in. And that is how that is going to look for you when you're done. Now, the next thing you're gonna need 
Uh, right here is a valve that comes with it. And your valve is going to go right here on the end of this air hose. And then you're going to be able to control your airflow, which will control how much water you have coming into that breeder box, which is going to be important for some of the things that, that you can use this breeder box for. Then this piece here, you're just going to add, run your air hose uh, to your air pump, which does not come with an air pump. All right, so a couple other things that I really appreciate about this breeder box is it comes with these little pieces right here. And what you can do with those is they will actually slide underneath right here. And that allows for you to adjust how far or how wide uh, your breeder box sits. So depending on what type of tank, if you run a rimless tank or something, um, you know, with a smaller rim to it, you can slide these on and that will be fine. Or if you have a much wider, you know, maybe a 75 gallon or 125 gallon you're on, you can use the whole thing and it will work out just fine for you either way. This is that we're going to look at here, down here on the bottom, you'll notice there's these two holes. Um, this is very similar to your hang on back fluval uh, filters. Uh, so you have this little piece here so that when you are, have your tank hung, that's going to keep it so you can level it and you can adjust it and move it around. And the last piece that we're going to look at for this breeder box is it's going to come with two gates. And that is for right here on your outflow for your water. There's a larger gate that you could slide right there. Larger gate there that you could put on the end. Or typically I just run a smaller gate. That way none of my fish fry um, are likely to be able to get out of this breeder box. So I just slide that right in there. The water will be able to flow out without any problems and your fry should stay right in the box. If you do have really small fry, you might want to add a little piece of sponge here um, and that will help keep your fry in the tank. So now we're gonna go take a look at a couple of these that I have up and running and show you exactly what I use these for. So what I'm doing here is I have two neons and they're coming from a much colder tank and they're gonna be moving here into my 75. Uh, I've got a bunch of neons already in here, but temperature wise, it's a pretty big change in temperature. The tank I had them in was unheated and that was fine over the summer, but it's starting to get a little colder. So they need to be moved to warmer water. So because it's such a big change in temperature, I'm actually acclimating these. So they came in with their colder water and you can see I'm bringing in some of the water from the tank so that they can slowly acclimate temperature wise. So when they move over into the 75, they'll have a much easier time transitioning into this water. So that is one way that you can use this breeder box. So one of the other ways that I would use that fluval breeder box to acclimate is for acclimating shrimp. Um, you could really slow down that airflow so that you really slow down the water flow that's coming in there uh, and start to drip acclimate your shrimp that way. Now you have to be careful with this because um, typically if we're talking about you know acclimating our shrimp we're talking about coming from the water they were in uh, from the retailer to your house. Uh, I do not want that water to go into my fish tank. I don't know what's in that water. Um, and I know what's in my water. My water is healthy. It, it's good for them. But it is a way to be able to work to start to drip acclimate your shrimp and get them ready to go. If you find this video helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe. Um, we'd love to have you come along and, and continue to watch some more of our reviews. Uh, and if you hang on to the end, we're going to give you a link for a review of the medium uh, fluval breeder box if you're interested in that. So let's go look at another way that I use the fluval breeder box uh, in our own personal aquariums here. So here's another way that I use these fluval breeder boxes. Uh, I use them as grow out tanks. And so I, as you can see, I have a whole bunch of little plecos here and they're almost big enough to go into a bigger tank and grow out some more. But this is where I brought them, uh, you know, this is, they're spent their first several weeks here. Um, you could hatch them in here if you, if you wanted to. I wait until they hatch and then I move them right from the cave while their parents are still guarding them or and uh, move them right into here. And you can see they're doing well and they're eating and they're getting their water changed through this. Um, you know, and it's pumping right out and everybody's looking happy. So, like I said, soon these guys will move them to a bigger tank. 
If you found that helpful, leave us a comment. Uh, or if you have any questions about the Fluval Breeder Box, you know, ask a question in the comments. We're answering all of our comments at this point, and uh, we're still small enough we can do that for you. Um, check out some of these other videos we have, and thanks for watching.